Well, have you heard of the baloney virus? I'm prepared for it, let me tell you. Got my uh, gas mask on, obviously to fight the virus. Hard hat, just in case something falls and hits me in the head. Ear protection, face shield. I'm telling you what, I'm ready. Elbow pads here, just in case I fall down. Life jacket on in case there's some water nearby. Tell you what, uh, I feel safer already. Definitely. I mean, hey, you know, the CDC, in my opinion, hasn't gone far enough. And I realize this is kind of inconvenient. It's going to be a little hard for me to preach this way, but it's for my safety, okay? I'm quarantining myself, all right? And, uh, hey, please do me a favor. Step back. Step back from the computer. You're a little bit too close, okay? Six feet apart at least. Stay back. Don't make me sick, okay? Uh, time to take some of the stuff off here. Let's just see how dangerous I can be. Ugh. Whew. Trying to prove a point here. Ugh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, gonna talk about uh, this whole coronavirus thing. I'm calling it the baloney virus. Uh, because it's a bunch of baloney. Um, all this stuff that's going on, the rubber gloves and everything else, and oh, we got to do all these things and whatever else. I'm going to show you what it's really about from the scriptures. Yeah. Ugh. It's amazing to me. I mean, honestly, I think if the government told people to do what I was just doing there, I think there'd be people that would do it. I really do. Um, take this stuff off and I'll be right back with you all right back into a more appropriate style of clothing uh, just my own sarcastic little way of saying how far this thing has gotten it's gotten way out of hand I mean just the paranoia and the the idiocy with this whole thing stuff doesn't even make sense you know there's just no proper procedure pro proper pro protocol medical quarantine wise this city's being shut down for two weeks this one's three weeks this one's six weeks uh we don't we're not really sure about this we're not really sure about that stay back six feet you know you know uh what's what's the thing the um distance thing what do they call it what is it called social distancing social distancing yeah that's what it's called the 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 government recommendations for social distancing you know, for something that's that's essentially a, a form of a flu. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be telling some stories of things I've been hearing locally here. Um, and just, just to show people are losing their free will. And that's what this whole issue is about. This whole coronavirus thing. I call it the baloney virus because that's what it is. A bunch of baloney. Um you know, every year it's some new virus that's coming out, you know, the swine flu and, the, and then the, uh, you know, I guess that was the H1N1 or whatever else. And then they had the uh, avian flu and then it was uh, inhalation anthrax right after 9-11, which came from Fort Detrick, Maryland, basically. Uh, and, um, you know, all these different things, the, the West Nile virus and, the, and the, this disease and that disease. And, and people are so blinded that they'll do all sorts of things that are far more dangerous to their life, like driving somewhere. How many people die in car accidents in a year? And, and not just die, horrible deaths. Very, very horrible deaths. You get in some accidents out there. I mean, people get trapped in vehicles, get burned alive, they get they drown and whatever else, go off the road into a river and things upside down, roll over, get in there all mashed up and, and whatever. I mean, my father, he was, you know, he was an EMT for 25 years or whatever it was. And uh, he tell us stories of things, people just, you know, horrible stuff. And yet they'll drive someplace, but they'll, they're scared to death of some virus that they're probably not even going to get. What's going on there? Well, you see, if you watch television, then you're scared. You have a spirit of fear. I'm going to show you about that here in the Bible. Uh, if you don't watch television, you don't listen to the stupid nonsense from the government, then you just kind of, well, whatever, life as usual. All right. But. The government can convince people to wear all kinds of stupid nonsense, you know, like this is somehow going to save you from things. 
you know, it impairs your life. It, it, it makes breathing more difficult, but I'm safe now. Crazy. And I mean, like, like I was just joking around there at the beginning. Hey, if you're going to wear some kind of a dust mask, man, go to the full level here. Gas mask. That'd keep you a lot safer. I mean, what if you live in an area where there's rivers around? Shouldn't you be wearing a life jacket just in case? Just in case you fall into the water. Bump your head or something, you could drown. I mean, you need to think about that. If it rains too much sometime, you know, don't worry about high water pants. You know, have a high water uh, life jacket on all the time. Uh, you know, if you, go to, if you go to a Baptist church, you should probably have one in case you fall into the baptismal you know, pool. You need that. You know, what if you fall down? I mean, you could do some serious damage to your, to your elbows here. You should wear elbow pads all the time just to keep yourself safe. You know, and of course, very important. You never know when something might hit you on the head. Why aren't you wearing a hard hat at all times? And loud noises? Ruin your hearing? Huh? Huh? What about that? Huh? Face shield? You see, it's insanity. And yet the government is practicing mind control tactics through television. That's what this whole thing is. Oh, you can't, you know, get near to me and whatever else. Is six feet really going to keep you safe from some kind of an airborne virus? No. You know, if it's going to happen, if it's in the air or whatever else, somebody comes in, <coughs> you know, you're going to get it. They're touching everything and whatever else. And antibacterial soap is actually killing good and bad bacteria, right? It's extremely toxic. You're putting poison on your skin. Again, think, people, think. You're putting something that is poisonous on your skin. I heard down at the bank the other day and some older woman and she said, oh, my hands are just so dry from putting on this antibacterial soap all the time. Yes, you're, po you're rubbing poison on yourself because you're worried about getting a virus. <laughs> but let's see what the Bible has to say. And, and uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about, you know, uh, being saved and the fact that you shouldn't fear things and why lost people do fear things. We're going to go through that first and foremost. Then I'm going to show you that the Bible definitely teaches that God gave every man and woman and child a free will. Okay, not the idiot uh, philosophies of John Calvin back in the 16th century with his God forces people to do things and God predestinates everything and nobody has a free will to do anything. That is nonsense. It's philosophical meanderings of a, of a lost man. Okay, and the Catholics adopt a lot of that stuff too. Funny how that works. But I'm going to show you from the scriptures that no man does have a free will and where this whole thing of elimination of free will is going. Because that's what this whole thing is with, we have, you know, you're, we're closing the, the libraries, we're closing the schools. Don't go to work. You got to quarantine yourself. It's all about destroying free will. Okay. You're being forced into doing things. Uh, the, the government has a right to, to do certain things and force laws and whatever else. Somebody robs a bank. They've just given up their right to, to freedom. Okay, the government has a right to go, send the police after that guy, take him to jail, the whole deal. Sure, not a problem. But if you're not doing anything wrong, the government has no right over your body. Okay? God owns you. God gives you rights. And he gives you a free will to choose things. But the government does not have right to get in there and take his position. But they will be in the future. The mark of the beast. We'll get back into that. And that this whole thing is leading into that. And then finally, the third part of this study is going to be showing you real, true, natural solutions for things like the flu or baloney virus um, that can actually, you know, cure you and keep you even from getting sick. There's a real thought, you know, how about instead of, uh, I'll just live however I want, live wickedly and whatever else, and, and then if I get it, then I'll look to the doctors to heal me. No, no, don't get sick in the first place. Prevention. You know, what do they say? That an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. A lot of truth in that. But let's start out here. 2 Timothy chapter 1 in your King James Bible. You say, I don't know. I don't know, brother. I don't know if you should be joking about this. There's a lot of people that are dying. There's a lot of people. Yeah, and there's people that die from air pollution and, and you know, shootings and stabbings and, and gang violence and, and drug abuse and drug overdose. You know, the drugs that are rightly prescribed by the hospitals, people die from that all the time. But you go to the hospital and they'll cure you from the coronavirus. 
living in an insane world. But uh, let's look about this thing. If you're afraid, if you're living in fear, if you're scared of all this stuff and, well, we have to do some things to protect ourselves. I'm going to show you where the spirit of fear came from there. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you're afraid of the coronavirus, you're out of fellowship with the Lord if you're saved. If you're lost, well, what do you expect? You don't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, you're dead in trespasses and sins. God has no reason to protect you. You don't have peace. Okay, um, But if you're saved and you're scared and you're, and you're, oh man, oh what if I get it and whatever else, you are out of fellowship with the Lord. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, And, and, and let's just say you do get it. I remember Brother uh, Jacob Thompson did a little video on this whole coronavirus, and he said, why are people so, so scared of this thing? If you're saved and you get it and you die, you come to be with the Lord. Oh, oh I, I just, I don't know if I'm ready. For to me, live is Christ and to die is gain, Paul said. Check yourself. Check yourself. Um, but here's the thing. Fear is one of the greatest control mechanisms that wicked man can use to control other people. It's the greatest tool of propaganda. You create an enemy and then you say, we have to fear that enemy. We have to, we have to join together. Catholics and Protestants, put aside your differences. We have this bigger enemy to fight. Hey, if you're, if you're a Jew and a Muslim, put aside your differences. We need to come together as a people. We need to, we need to bring ourselves, just, just forget these, these divisive issues. We need to come together because we have this bigger thing that we need to fear. FDR, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Thank you for Jesuitical sophistry statement there. Um, yeah, FDR that, that basically stole the gold from the American people. And a lot of other things too that that you know wicked devil brought in. My my grandfather, uh, my Milton Denlinger, he couldn't stand FDR. He just would fly off the rails. A very calm man, uh, Mennonite, you know, and and he was very very calm, easygoing. But you talk about FDR, and oh boy, <laughs> if you want to make Grandpa mad, bring up FDR. I understand why now. I didn't for years and years and years. He died when I was 17 years old, and I was an idiot back then, you know, and. And the Lord's shown me a lot of things since then. But now I know why. I know why Grandpa didn't like uh, FDR very much. A lot of the things that man did to this country, you know, started the, uh, the uh, death knell or whatever of America. He was a bad man. But his statement, the only thing we had to fear is fear itself. What does that prove? What does that do? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, it's just a, it's a nonsense statement. But yet it still is employed today. Okay. We need to fear certain things. We can fear, you know, let's, let's have fear of fear or whatever. It's just, it's weird. <laughs> but the devil likes to, that's, that's one of his favorite tactics. And that's what you're seeing with a lot of people right now in this world. Just tell you a real quick story. I literally heard yesterday, I was down at the bank having some issues with my card thing. So I've been back and forth with our bank here locally. And there was a woman in there and she was talking to the teller. You can't go into the lobby anymore because there's the coronavirus, you know? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. So it's just one woman there at the bank. You know, they don't have a drive up at this bank. And so you gotta, you gotta be there at the window and, and whatever. They got this little glass thing and you gotta slide your stuff down in underneath this deal. And so she's there and she's talking about her husband, this woman there, not the bank teller, but the customer. And she said, yeah, she said, he's, uh, he's quarantined himself at his camp. And uh, he's going to be there for at least a couple of weeks. And he's having food brought in, you know, and they leave it at the doorstep, you know, and he charges it to his card and everything. He can't go to work right now. So he just said he's seen some sick people in the area. So he's going to quarantine himself. Okay. What did our text say? We're supposed to have a, a power love and a sound mind. Think about this. That man, I guarantee you he's lost. I don't even need to hear anything more. He's quarantined himself in his camp and his wife, maybe they have children, maybe they don't, I don't know. But his wife is just out there having to do the errands and whatever else. Is that power? No. 
He's effeminate. He's a sissy. A feminine little girl. I'm quarantining myself at my camp. Uh, and a sound mind and love, you know, power, love, and a sound mind. Where's his love? Where's his love for his wife? I got to get home. I got to protect my wife. No, honey, I can't come back right now. I've quarantined myself. There's sick people in the area here. I might get to. Why don't you go back and take care of your wife? Possibly children if they have any. How about the thing of a sound mind? Think about this. He's at his camp quarantining himself and he has takeout food being delivered to his doorstep. So you're having somebody else cook your food at a restaurant. How do you know that all the employees there are, are, are well? How do you know that, that uh, they're washing your, their hands and whatever else? I've worked in every level of, of restaurants. They are filthy. Five-star restaurant, filthy. Diner type of thing, filthy. Average restaurant, filthy. <laughs> they're there to make money. Okay, they're not going to take a whole lot of time washing their hands and making sure all their utensils are clean and whatever. Get the stuff done, man. Get it out there. The customer's waiting. And you're going to trust your health to people leaving takeout food on your doorstep. But you don't want to leave the cabin because of coronavirus. The coronavirus might get you. <laughs> Pathetic loser. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 51 through 58. I love this text. I go to it a lot. Because it proves so many different things. Again, for a Christian. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump... For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. Hmm. Interesting. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why are you worried about death? Why are you worried about the grave? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, unless the CDC tells you otherwise. Always abounding in the work of the Lord until the government says, I can't go to work. I shouldn't be out on the road or I shouldn't. I don't care what the government says. They're not going to tell me not to go out and do the work of the Lord. They're not going to dictate what I do with my body. And you know what it's leading up to? I guarantee you what it's leading up to. The biggest financier of the government, especially in America, not going to speak for the other countries, whatever, but America, the biggest money behind this government is the pharmaceutical industry. Mark it down. They have done so much illegal stuff and whatever else, and the government's doing drugs and, and whatever else in other countries and things, getting the drugs brought in, the heroin and all this other stuff, because it's used in pharmaceutical medicine, the opioid thing and whatever else. I mean, where do you think they're getting that stuff from? Opioids for painkillers and, and, and things. Where do they get it? Does Merck have a few uh, opium plants out back that they can go and cut the thing and scrape the sap off and whatever else and cook it? They're getting it from Afghanistan, the Golden Crescent, the Golden Triangle, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, I think it is. They're getting it from these places. Dealing drugs. You get on the DEA's website, or whatever the DEA is now, I think it's something else. You know, I think they added something else to the Drug Enforcement Agency, whatever. Uh, but you get on their website, they actually show the thing of, of American drug manufacture. But it's for pharmaceutical drugs. It's, don't worry, it's, everything's fine. People all the time on, on, on pharmaceutical drugs out there. Dying and whatever else because of overdose. Somebody forgets themselves. They take two uh, you know, pain pills or whatever else in the morning. And they, they, did I take my pill? I don't remember if I, okay, I guess I, I didn't. Maybe I'll, and they take two more and all of a sudden they're going into coma or whatever else. They overdosed on heroin. Which is what opioids are, by the way. Heroin and morphine are almost chemically identical. I mean, you can do the research into that. 
Just Google it. It's just right there in front of your face. Bear used to actually come out with bottles of heroin. Again, look into that. B-A-Y-E-R, the biggest pharmaceutical company in the world, and they used to sell heroin, bottles of it, back in the early 1900s through the pharmacies. The drug trade and the whole big pharmacopoeia thing and whatever else, they control the government. So what are they doing? I mean, right here in Maine, they were people putting up signs, say no to big pharma, because the big pharma industry was trying to make vaccines required. See, that's the issue here. Oh, we're just trying to do this for your safety. You don't want to get sick, do you? We're just trying to keep you safe. And people say, oh, okay. And they lose their sound mind. They lose their common sense. You do what you want with my body. My body belongs to you. I'm an instrument of the government. I'm a slave of the government. It's wickedness. Wickedness. And it's all leading up to the mark of the beast. And who do you think is going to be behind the mark of the beast? Implantable microchips. Who's going to bring it out? Hollywood? No. The pharmaceutical industry. They will be the ones that will be injecting these things into people's right hands or into their foreheads. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. They're getting people ready, you see. Oh, there's this virus out there, and the only way for you to be protected is to get that vaccine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christian? No, I'm not taking that. You're not putting that vaccine in me. The last time I got a vaccine was uh, years ago when I cut my thumb really bad, and they said, your tetanus shot, I shouldn't say a vaccine, but it's a shot, essentially the same thing. It's a bunch of poisonous petrochemicals that they inject into your bloodstream, which is awful. I mean, swallowing ph pharmaceutical pills is bad enough, but they put that stuff mainlining it right into your bloodstream. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Oh, you, sir, you, you, your tetanus shot is out of date. We got to give you this, this uh, tetanus sh shot, you know, and they, they inject this thing in me. I was sick for three days. Why did I get sick? Because they stitched my thumb up. It's terrible. <laughs> but let's go on to the next passage here. Romans chapter 8. I just get sick and tired of hearing all this ridiculous, wicked propaganda. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Well, it didn't say pestilence. It didn't say... A uh, virus. <laughs> Probably some people would think that. Um, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. You know, you forget yourself sometimes. Uh, you forget what the, the history of Bible-believing Christians has been. It hasn't been one of nice, peaceful, happy, freedom, frog, frolicking in the flower meadow with butterflies. That's not it. The history of Christianity, of Bible-believing Christianity, has been one of us getting slaughtered mainly by the Catholic Church. Organized religion. Yeah, they hate you if you're a Bible believer. They can't stand you. They want to they slaughter you. And, and don't forget, you say, well, as long as we got Trump in there, Trump's our man. He holds up a Bible, so he's a Christian. Uh, yeah, what about his promise that he made at the Al Smith dinner where he talked about uh, ending you know, persecution of Catholics or whatever as far as speech is concerned? You can watch my video on it. Hear it from his own mouth. Anti-Catholic bigotry or whatever else. We're going to put an end to that. What about that campaign promise? Shouldn't that kind of raise a few red flags for you as a Christian? He wants to stop people from speaking against Catholicism? Hmm. What are you doing, Christian? Thinking that everything's just fine and everything's just going to be okay for the future and whatever? Verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Very true. Uh, the Lord loves you. Okay, The Lord will protect you. But that doesn't mean he's always just going to say, hey, Nothing bad's ever going to happen to you and whatever else, and you just you do whatever the, the CDC or the government or whatever else says. Um, Romans 13 is about submitting to good rules and good laws. 
I'm I'm 100% for Romans 13. Let's actually just turn there. I don't have this in my notes, but let's let's turn there because you're going to get this from the hirelings that are out there. You know, you get these guys and they're bold and I'll not have anybody control my speech and whatever else. And then they turn right around, they'll read Romans 13 and they'll say, so we should submit to the government. It doesn't matter what they say. That's not what it's saying. Romans chapter 13, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Okay, and that's, I've been through so many different uh, Baptist churches and other churches, and they will all stop right there. They'll just stop and say, see, so it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. We have to, we have to submit to it. I don't particularly like wearing all this protective gear, you know, but if the government says it's a rule, then you have to do it. And if they tell you that you have to come in and, and be forcibly vaccinated, well, then I, you have to do it, friend. No, you don't. How do you know? Keep reading. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. It's talking about a, a ruler that's good. And I've seen even sometimes where these powers that be, police officers and whatever else, I've had dealings with them, and they're actually there for a corrupt purpose, but I submit to the law of the Lord, and I just simply say, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not doing that. I didn't do anything wrong, and you know it. There's no proof here for this or that or whatever. And they'll submit to the book without even understanding that they're doing it. There was a time when the police got called on myself and uh, my wife, and... Um, I remember they, they oh, we're going to separate you. We need to, this officer is going to talk to your wife and this one's going to talk to you. And I said, no, you're not going to do that. You can talk to me. Both of you will talk to me. I said to my wife, go on over that way. Okay, let's go on outside. We'll talk. And they did it. They didn't say, sir, you're resisting. You're resisting. You know, no, they did it. You don't have a right to talk to my wife without me being present. And I don't care what laws you have. All right. I don't care what your orders are or what you're trying to tell me to do or whatever else. We get a knock on the door here and there's some medical goons or whatever else and they say, roll up your sleeve. We're here to keep you safe. Get off of my land. No. You say, well, you would go again, but there could be a law passed. I don't care. Again, what are you thinking, Christian? Well, we would just, you know, I just want to kind of get along and I just, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Really? You do remember that they killed your Savior, don't, don't you? You do, you do remember that. You do remember that Peter and Paul were both in prison. You do remember that? You remember John? Remember John? The disciple whom Jesus loved, how he was in, in exile there on the island of Patmos? They put him there as an old man. No respect for his age. or Stuck him there to die. You, you remember that part? You remember, do you remember reading that in there? Oh, but, 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 you know, brother, we just, okay, that was back then. Things have changed. We need to just submit. You can submit all you want to. I'm not going to. I'll do the good things, and the rulers that are there, they'll submit to the book. And if they don't, okay, that's a problem. Um, but I'm not going to listen to them. I mean, I, I think this whole coronavirus thing is, a, is just a bunch of satanic mind control programming. That's all it is. Just a bunch of nonsense. And, and now, see, now that they've established this, this thing, well, you can't get within six feet of people and you have to put, we went into the town office the other day and they got tables set up. You can't even go back and sit at the desk with the woman that worked there. And I've done that for years and years and whatever else. People going in there with the flu and say, oh, you kind of have a little bit of flu. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible and whatever. Far more you know, contagious and whatever else. They go in to get their, write out their property tax or their vehicle registration or whatever else. And it's just, well, hey, go get, go home, get some, some uh, good, you know, chicken broth or whatever else. And, but now all of a sudden the government said, oh no, they shouldn't even be allowed in the office. So you put these, this gate up here and whatever, and you can't get past it. So now that makes sense. And the old way of dealing with people does, doesn't make sense anymore because the government said so. But let's look at the examples of free will. You'll run into some Calvinistic nut sometime and they'll just say, God has preordained everything. 
We have no free will of our own. It's all by God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty dictates the universe, and if anything bad happens, it's God that did it. And anything that this and anything that that, it's all just God just does the whole thing. We have no free will. Whatever happens today is all totally just God wanted it to happen that way, and that's why it happened that way. If the government comes and says, roll up your sleeve, I'll roll up my sleeve because God ordained them to come, and therefore I'm just going to do whatever they tell me to do. A bunch of satanic philosophy is all that that is. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 through 17. We'll see the first example of free will. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, we say commanded, keep reading, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. I thought it dictates everything and every action and whatever else. You can eat of it freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now God gives a command there, but he says, hey, it's up to you. He didn't say, I'm going to ordain. Now, Adam, in a little while, I'm going to have Eve, your wife, and she's going to talk to the serpent, and she's going to take the fruit, and you're going to eat it, and you're both going to die. But see, I've probably preordained it. It's all just set out, so just, you know, you can't really enjoy your day. I guess you kind of enjoy your day, because you don't really have a brain of your own, apparently. And I'm just going to steer you through everything and make it all happen. And then blame you for doing wrong when I was the one that made it happen. <laughs> no. He gives him a command, but he says, hey, don't do this. Now I'm going to go away and it's up to you whether you want to obey me or not. You see why there's so much suffering and violence and evil in this world is because God gave man a free will. God's not up there just causing everything to happen and whatever else. God gives man a free will. And when God creates evil, and he does, it's to punish man because man has done wrong of his own free will. Man's own free will. All right? I'll show you another one. Joshua chapter 24. Another example. And there's so many. I mean, we could do a whole, I could do a whole huge study on the issue of free will. There's just, it's all through the scriptures. It's, Calvin is a, it's just, anybody falls for John Calvin's nonsense is, <laughs> you got some real issues. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Notice the difference between the pagans serving multiple gods and a saved man serving the Lord. There's only one God. Okay? Not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's three gods. Watch my study on the Godhead versus Trinity issue. But notice what he says. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Not, hey, God's forcing us to serve him, and we have no option. We have no decision here. It's just all we're forced. You choose. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Okay? Um, let me reword it a little bit. Not changing scripture. I'm just saying, let me use this as a modern example here. Choose you. If you're going to serve and follow the standards, the idiot standards of the CDC and the government and whatever else, and says, you can't this and you can't that, you have to quarantine yourself in your home and whatever. Choose if you're going to follow that. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And if the Lord tells us to go do something, we're going to go do it. And I'm not going to wear a bunch of safety gear and rub my hands with poisonous antibacterial soap and whatever else. Not going to do it. Well, the, the government might force you to. No, I'm not going to do it. Oh, well, they might put military troops on the street. Okay, then I'll have a conversation with them. You see, I'm a minister of God. And if you're saved, you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Bring the Lord into the thing. And just say, well... I don't believe the Lord is for this whole system here. I don't believe, you know, the Lord wants me to go do this or do that. By the way, are you saved? Bring the Lord into it. The power of the Holy Spirit needs to be there in the life of a Christian. Oh, but they, they, they might, you know, uh, go after me and whatever else. Yeah, like they've done with Christians for centuries. We need to stand against this nonsense. Matthew chapter 23, 
anytime you and and it's so funny these these church buildings you know they're just lockstep just going right in with this whole thing you know we have to you know implement the different procedures and whatever else you know why because they're government buildings <laughs> they're 501c3 corporations been preaching against this stuff for years and years and years that you know oh well they they, they you know trump undid the the johnson amendment whatever yeah but they're still government corporations A lot of different studies I could do here. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 through 39. I'll show you another example of free will. And this one comes from the Lord himself. Look at this. Matthew 23, verse 37 through 39. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Notice the Lord says, I would have gathered you. I would have protected you. But you didn't want it. Well, couldn't he have just overthrown their free will or whatever? No. He wasn't going to do it. I'll protect you. It's up to you. Do you want it? Do you want me? No? Okay. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say... Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. No, no, you won't see me until I ordain it in my sovereign will that I'm going to force it on you. You know, uh, what do they call it? Irresistible grace. Bam! Irresistible grace. You've been hit with it. You know, unconditional election. Bam! He's got you. You know, you have no say in the matter. And all those lost people out there, they have no say in the matter either. He commands them, all men everywhere to repent in the book of Acts, but... Not really, because he's actually ordained it, preordained it, that they're going to hell. And they can't do anything about it. Uh, no, man has a free will. The Lord himself explains it. Man has a free will. Let me show you the real thing. It's coming up here. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, what the baloney virus is really about. I mean the coronavirus. Such a serious matter. Uh -huh. Yeah. Revelation 13, verse 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the na name of the beast or the number of his name, Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. You see, the coronavirus situation is not, they say it could kill millions. It will kill millions. Um, it's going to actually eventually kill billions. You say, well, I thought you said it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, the virus itself is, is a hokey scam and whatever else. More people are dying from other sicknesses and car accidents and gunshot wounds and whatever else. But here's the point. The coronavirus, oh, you can't go to work. We have to shut this down. We have to shut that down. When the economy is already faltering, when the stock market is already crashing, what's going on? They're causing people to, to spend what little savings they had. Have you seen the lines at the bank? Have you seen the, the grocery store shelves being picked clean? See? Spend, spend, spend. Get into debt. Why? Debtors are going to be forced to take the mark of the beast to keep the little scam going. You don't want to lose your house, do you? You don't want to lose your car, do you? Your cell phone, your blah, 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 blah. Well, then you need to come into this new monetary system. So, yes, the coronavirus and other things along with it in the future, it will kill millions. It will kill billions because it is leading up to that mark of the beast system. And the mark of the beast, mark my words, ties into the 5G and the future 6G system, where the which will be the integration, total integration of your brain and the internet. And that is why these people, they take the mark. We'll look at this here in just a minute in Revelation 14. They take the mark and they can't get saved for any reason ever. That's never happened before. There is no sin right now that God can't forgive you for, that the blood of Jesus Christ can't just wash away. There is no sin that that blood can't take away. Uh, limited atonement. Again, Calvin, the idiot, comes out with this thing of limited atonement. His, his, the blood wasn't shed for everybody. It was just shed for the elect. And if you're not elect, the blood's not there. Nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. Again, I can do a whole study on that, that thing there. Anybody wants to get saved, you can get saved. 
And I don't care what the sins are. You could be a transgendered, uh, sodomite, whatever. You come to the Lord tr truly, completely broken. No self-righteousness. You're not a good person. Lord, my life is a wreck. God, could you please save me? And He will save you. There's not anybody out there the Lord's going to say, oh, that, oh, boy, you went a little bit too far. I don't know if I could save. God will save anyone. Except for a, a prideful, self-righteous uh, person. He won't save that. But look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Free will. They're receiving it. He calls them. He puts it out there. Hey, it's a law. You have to do this. Revelation 13. But these people are receiving it. They're worshiping the beast of their own free will. Now, when they take it, their brain is going to be gone. Kind of like a lot of people on pharmaceutical drugs. <laughs> uh, that you can see that their brain's gone. They're just... Uh, just It's disturbing. It, it, it vexes my righteous soul to see these people. Just a brain just is gone. Their common sense has left them. You shouldn't make fun of it. You could hurt people's feelings. Oh, I should just sim simply do like all the other effeminate preachers out there and just say... Well, you know, I, while I don't agree, I just think that maybe you should look at all the... No, it's wrong. It's wicked. You look like a ridiculous fool when you're on pharmaceutical pills where you can't even... You're, you're losing cognitive function and, and you're just walking around like a zombie. It looks terrible. It looks bad. I'm going to call it like it is. Verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. And the heretics are coming out saying, oh, no, 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 it's always faith alone. And you can watch my studies on that. What's my point with this whole study? God gave you, you, a free will. The government wants to take that from you because the government is acting under the power of Satan right now. Now, there are people within governmental structure that will still submit to this book. Technically, anybody has to if you get them cornered right and the Holy Spirit's there and whatever else. Now, they're going to get more and more corrupt. They're going to probably put Christians to death. We're going to be treated like criminals and the whole deal. That's the way it's always been, brethren. Um, but the point is, you have to say, no, when they're crossing the line, when they're starting to get into that, okay, you're getting in between me and the Lord. The Lord's not telling me to do this stuff that you're trying to tell me to do. Um, no. No. I mean, if the day comes out that they try to tell you that you have to wear a gas mask and a hard hat and a dust mask and rubber gloves and, you know, uh, excuse me, sir, you need to put that, that stuff, the antibacterial soap on your hands. Um, what's in it? No, I'm not going to put that stuff on me. It's poisonous. Uh, sir, that's, that, what you're doing here is very, very dangerous. You're supposed to put that. I'm not putting that stuff on. It's poisonous. Okay? That's why it dries people's hands out. Uh, sir, ma'am, um, you need to take this vaccine. You see, because all of us that are vaccinated, we're safe now from the disease. But if you don't take the vaccine, then you are a danger to us that are safe because we've taken the vaccine. What, what did we say earlier about the spirit of fear? God's given a Christian a sound mind. Think about the vaccine thing. They're safe because they've got it. But they're worried about you if you don't have the vaccine because you could give them the sickness that they're safe from because they have the vaccine. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah. Absolutely insane. But they come along and they say to you, roll up your sleeve. We got to give you that vaccine. No choice. We're going to keep you safe. Um, no, don't touch me. Um, what's in this vaccine? You tell me what's in the vaccine. And let me look up those chemical names and, and whatever else. Uh, no, it, it doesn't matter. You can trust us. You can trust the pharmaceutical industry. You can trust us and everything else. Okay, can, I, can you show me a list of side effects? Nausea, vomiting, 
uh, upset stomach, suicidal thoughts, headaches, you know, and you want to inject that into my bloodstream. No. No. Oh, well, sir, um, you're going to need to do these other... Uh, if you're violating my rights as a Christian, the answer is no. Well, that's going to put you at odds with the law. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're not taking away my freedom. My freedom comes from Jesus Christ. See, he made me free when he saved me, washed my sins away with his precious blood that he shed on the cross. You're not going to take my free will from me for any reason. And let me just say this. If you're lost out there and you're still watching this, and you say, well, I agree with you. I don't, I'm not into the whole Bible thing and whatever else, but I, I agree with you on the issue of free will. I'm all for that. Well, praise the Lord that you still have some brains left. Okay? But uh, you're not going to be able to stand without the Lord's help. Plain and simple. I'm glad you, that you say people aren't going to come in here and tell me what to do with my life. That's good. But you need God on your side. Without that, not a lot of hope for you. Okay? But let's get into some real solutions for the baloney virus, <laughs> the coronavirus thing, and any kind of flu, any kind of cold, whatever else, any kind of thing like this where you cough and you sneeze. and you... It's just common stuff, people. First and foremost, we'll look at uh, Camu Camu. Okay? This is, I believe, the second highest uh, source of vitamin C on the planet. All right, uh, it's a berry down in South America. They grind it up into a powder. You can see there. And um, right there it is. You can find it at a health food store. You can get it on eBay. We buy ours on eBay in bulk. Um, you say, well, it's expensive. Yeah, good health is, okay? Um, you know, what can I tell you? I think that there's a, some kind of a beet or something. I think uh, Russian wild beet or I, I forget what the deal is but there's one that has a little bit more vitamin c but this is just packed with vitamin c you know uh, one teaspoon has more than 10 times the recommended daily value for vitamin c it also has anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties very very good next we have uh, raw apple cider vinegar get that for me okay good Raw apple cider vinegar, right there. Good stuff. There's other brands too. This is one we use quite a bit. Put a little bit of this in your tea and your water and whatever else. I mean, you shouldn't heat it up because then it's not raw anymore. But uh, you can put this in a lot of different things. Drink a little bit of this on a daily um, basis. If you start to get sick, you can actually add this to your uh, chicken soup, which I'll be getting to here in just a minute. Um, you can add a little bit of this tablespoon or something to your regular soup. And again, this is really, really good for knocking out a cold or the flu or whatever else. Natural things. There's no side effects to this. Okay. Uh, next we have raw garlic. Thank you. It's a bulb of garlic there. It's not cooked. It's not dried or anything else. You just take it apart. Take that little clove of garlic. You can put it. Cut it up, put it in your food or whatever. And uh, it actually has a, another side effect to it. There is a side effect to garlic, which I think is very important at this time with the coronavirus. And that is uh, social distancing. You eat enough of this stuff, especially if you're just eating it raw and drinking some water down with it. That breath that you exude and the sweat and everything else, it's going to keep people at a safe distance. You see? See how it all works out? So good. You know, social distancing, side effect with raw garlic. All right. Uh, next, we have bone broth, real chicken soup. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, this is some we actually just finished this morning. <clears throat> that is bone broth. All right. Chicken bones, any kind of bones that you can get, um, the, any kind of gristle or, or the cartilage type of thing. You cook it for a while, just put it in a stock pot, add some water to it to cover it and everything else up a little ways and you just slow cook it. We had this slow cooking for a couple days. And what it does is it gets the marrow out, it gets the calcium out, it gets collagen. Um, <clears throat> hmm? Amino acids. Amino acids. You know, it gets, it gets a lot of the benefits. Again, it's an ancient thing. It's an ancient tradition of a lot of people. They would, they would cook down their bones and whatever else. And you make a soup stock. And then you can add this 
what you do is you take a, a whole chicken or whatever else, chicken with the meat and the bones and everything, put it into, into a stock pot. And um, <clears throat> you want to go get, give me a stock pot there real quick, honey. Um, you, you, not the one on the stove, the other one over there. Um, but you, you put a chicken in a stock pot and you cover it with water and you, you basically cook it for a while. This is what I mean by a stock pot, if you don't know. Put a chicken in there, cover it with water, up to there or so, whatever, inch or two above the chicken, and then you just slow cook it. And eventually the meat just falls right off of the bones. That's also helping because it's softening the bones and you're getting a lot of the nutrients coming out. Then you basically strain out the liquid into another container because you're going to be cooking with that again. And then <clears throat> you, you take all the meat off the bones, put the meat in, save the bones for your soup stock. And then once it's all back in there, you put the broth back in and then you can add whatever kind of uh, vegetables you want. There's a good one. Um, onions, also very, very good. Very high in sulfur, which is another way to fight a lot of the, the viruses and whatever else. Potatoes, diced potatoes, uh, carrots, celery, um, thyme, the herb thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. Uh, there's always time for time. <laughs> Had to say that. Um, parsley, another one that's really good. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can put in, different spices, seasonings, whatever else, make a really, really tasty soup. And then you put in a little bit of your bone broth here, your soup stock. And this, by the way, when, this is still a little bit warm. Um, when it gets cold, it'll turn almost into a jello, you know, because it's, it's very, very high in, in collagen. Um, extremely good for you. Uh, leaky, it'll heal leaky gut syndrome. It'll, it'll strengthen your fingernails, your bones, your, your hair will grow better, whatever else, your teeth, uh, your complexion on your face. I mean, it's off the charts. You can look up stuff on the thing of soup stock, bone broth, really, really, really high nutrient dense food. And see, again, I talked about at the beginning, prevention. Don't just say, well, I'm just going to go out to eat and eat a bunch of junk food. And as soon as I get sick, I'll run to the hospital. That's foolish, okay? I'm just going to live a life of wicked sin, and as soon as I get in really bad trouble, then I'll come to God and say, God, get me out of this. No. Stop your sinning, okay? You're going to struggle with sin. I get that. I get that. Stop your eating bad. Well, you're going to struggle with some bad health issues now and then. I get that. You can't live in perfect health. You can't live sinless. All right? I, I understand. But the point is you fight that stuff. You try to get those things out of your life, all right? <clears throat> um, just stick this stock pot down there. Next we have raw honey. Here's some that we have locally. Make sure it's local. Don't buy it shipped in from across the country, whatever else. And you're in uh, West Virginia and you buy raw organic honey from California. So no, no, it has to be local. Local raw honey. This is from Maine here. You can see. Raw honey. Make sure you get it raw. It's been a little bit cold, so it starts to crystallize a little bit down there, but perfectly fine. It never goes bad. Hmm. The Word of God is compared to honey. Never goes bad. Understand? <laughs> uh, but raw honey is another one that I would call a, a native superfood. Um, it's just off the charts in nutrition and health. Also very good if you have a sore throat, the honey will coat it, uh, your throat, um, really, really good. Again, an, another great superfood type of a thing that you can do, apple cider vinegar, raw honey together with a little bit of, of spring water or whatever else. Um, very, very, very good for you. Uh, the next couple of things here. <clears throat> Um, need to, I need to say this. I did mention a little bit, but the thing of no junk food or poison pop, soda pop. <laughs> we like to call it poison pop. You need to get that stuff out of your life because it's destroying your immune system. It's lowering your immune system big time. And so, um, what? It lowers your bone density. Lowers your bone density, yeah, because phosphoric acid in the soda pop actually eats away your bones. Okay, if you want proof of that, um, just put some Coca-Cola or some other thing that's has phosphoric acid and watch it rust nails and things and just wonderful. I've heard that you can actually dissolve meat with uh, 
poison pot poured over top of it. That's a nice thought, you know, but people are eating this stuff and drinking this stuff. And, you know, I, I see these people, they're stocking up on their food, you know, because they're quarantined. And I'm, and I'm looking at their, gro their grocery cart and I'm thinking, okay, you're buying poison pop. You've got Twinkies. You've got all this junk food. You're lowering your immune system. You need to be out moving. Again, exercise is a big part of this whole thing. Staying moving, staying active, not just sitting there in front of the television. Uh, oh man, this is bad. People, wake up. <laughs> but <clears throat> they're lowering their immune system, so the chance of getting it is that much greater. People are losing their sound mind. Next we have, okay, give me that. Uh, next we have lemon and salt. Okay, if you actually do have a sore throat develop where you're just, uh, it hurts to swallow. Okay, um, don't go for Robitussin or NyQuil or some kind of a thing, cough syrup, which is just basically alcohol and a bunch of other chemicals. Okay, food coloring and whatever else, coal tar dye. Uh, no, don't do that. Okay, this is salt right here. Coarse sea salt is what you're looking at there. Okay, it is not white. It is gray, all right? Uh, this is Celtic sea salt. You can also get, there's a French sea salt and whatever else. I know that they actually, along the coast of Maine here, there's actually salt farms. So really, really good uh, mineral nutrient dense sea salt. The white stuff that's, you know, iodized or whatever else that they put, you know, iodine in it, they add things to it, whatever, and they, they refine it so it's white and it doesn't stick together. And because this is very, very clumpy you can see there, you know, it, it clumps together because it's it's still got some dampness from the sea, you know, in it and whatever. But all that doesn't look pretty when it comes out of your nice little collectible salt shaker, you know, and you can just sprinkle it, you know. <laughs> no, you need a spoon or just use your fingers with this stuff. But again, take a lemon. I don't have a lemon here right now. We don't need one. Don't exactly grow them here in northern Maine, but, but you take a lemon, you cut it in half or cut it in sort of a, not just half but a quarter like a little wedge and then you can sprinkle some salt on it and just you know kind of bite it and and suck the juice of the lemon and the salt down my wife told me about this and i kind of thought i don't know about that and i tried it and it works really good a day or two your your sore throat is gone all right and also be sure to eat the meat of the lemon everything inside of the the skin yeah a little bit better experience and stuff she said make sure that you eat the the, the actual fruit, the meat of the lemon, okay? Don't eat the skin, but uh, the meat of it is fine. Another one that you can add to your um, <clears throat> arsenal of, of uh, health food, which I don't, I don't have any here right now, um, but uh, cayenne pepper is another one that's very, very good. Good for circulation, good for a lot of things. You know, uh, don't get it in an open wound. That hurts a little bit, um, you know, but you can add, again, you can... The thing of raw honey, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of cayenne pepper. Um, very, very good for you. So, and you can do a lot more research. There's a lot more that we haven't even mentioned here. But God has provided the cure for all these sicknesses and all these illnesses and whatever else. Um, you don't need to fear any of this stuff, brethren. They tell you to start wearing all kinds of things and and you got to you gotta wear... You know, you got to wear all kinds of safety gear and you got to keep, you know, rubber gloves on you. And I'm seeing older people and they got rubber gloves going into the post office to get their mail. And I'm thinking, this is insane. And of course, you know, I've heard people say, well, it's partly also the thing of they're trying to get rid of cash, you know, because cash could be a carrier of coronavirus. Oh, you know, it's just nonsense. Okay. And, and where does it end? Where does it end? Well, you should wear rubber gloves because that can keep you healthier. Okay, well, then if you're going to wear rubber gloves, why shouldn't you wear a full chemical mask so that you don't breathe it in? And if you're going to wear a full chemical mask, why not wear a hard hat? I mean, you never know. You could be walking through the street and something could hit you in the head and you could really get hurt. And hearing protection and you got to have the face shield down. Make sure you have the face shield down whenever you're driving down. It. Where does it end? Free will. You see? Uh, no, I don't need that stuff. I take care of my health. I take care of myself. No, thank you. Hey, I'm saved. I'm born again. I don't fear death. The Lord will, Lord will protect me from this stuff. 
I eat right, I live right, so I'm not really worried about that stuff. And if I do get sick, hey, I know the, uh, I know the right things. I know the remedies. Garlic, antibacterial, very strong antibacterial. Again, I've gotten sick different times. A couple cloves of garlic, you crush it up, you, you cut it up and whatever else, spoon it down with plenty of water. It's pretty rough, but you, you get it down, you'll be healed in no time. Okay, and you start adding some of this stuff together and whatever else, talk about high powered uh, knocking out your cold or your flu or whatever else. I do hope that you think. I hope that you follow 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. If you have a spirit of fear right now with this whole thing, you're out of fellowship with God. Just that simple. You are out of fellowship with the Lord. Um, you shouldn't be that way. You're to have a power, love, and a sound mind. Anybody tells you anything, you say, wait a second. What does the Bible say about that? Hey, uh, this book is against what you're telling me to do. I'm going to follow the book and I'm going to trust the Lord. I don't care what laws you pass. I don't care what you tell me to do. I'm not following you. I do pray that you take heed to this study and um, don't be led by the spirit of fear. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.